his games in the Granada match. The North West really was the hotbed of English football today. As the pools panel sat in judgment on the frozen south, Oldham and Everton warmed to the heat of a local derby battle at Boundary Park. No postponements in Granada land, so no shortage of action on tonight's Granada match. We'll see the goal with which Steve McMahon may have signed off his Liverpool career against Nottingham Forest. And the last dramatic minutes of Manchester City's match with Queen's Park Rangers at Main Road. We also take a check on the first division pretensions of Kenny Dalglish's Blackburn Rovers. But we start in the company of 15,000 party souls at Oldham, where the visit of Everton was seasoned by an old boys reunion. Everybody has their favourite place to go shopping, and Joe Royals is Goodison Park. The older manager has made five signings this season, three of them from Everton. So Graham Sharp, his centre forward, and Mike Milligan in midfield are lining up in familiar company today. The Oldham team is unchanged from the one that was once again unlucky in defeat at Wimbledon last week. Ian Marshall enforces the Everton connection. The two centre-backs, Earl Barrett and Richard Jobson, are on England B duty next week, trying to book a trip to the European Championship finals. Everton's Robert Varshika won't be going, and won't be going to the next World Cup either if England get their way. The Polish international winger is recalled today because Mark Ward and Tony Cotty are unfit. Both managers have committed themselves to 4-2-4. Kevin Sheedy is back as one of the two in the Everton midfield. His partner, John Everill, and centre-half Martin Keown are also in that B-squad bound for Spain next week. Referee Bill Burns passed the pitch fit for play this morning, although there's a patch on the far side under the shadow of the main stand that's still particularly treacherous. The toss for choice events was conducted 45 minutes before kickoff to enable the players to choose the footwear best suited to their territory. The further away from the near touchline you go, the more difficult the surface becomes. Nobody in the posse trading leads in Manchester United is going better than Everton at the moment. Four wins from their last five league games, up to within four points of third place Sheffield Wednesday but still 14 points off the title pace. Andy Barlow with the throw in for Oldham. Won't thank Rick Holden for the return, but John Holworth will be thankful of an early touch on a parky afternoon. Keown set up. Sheedy. Earl Barrett in control. Everton are seventh, their highest position of the season to date. Oldham 16th, but there are only six points separating them. Mid-table describes most of the first division at the moment. Keown beating Palmer to the ball. Here's Johnston. Couldn't out Fox Johnson though. He's got plenty of support to his right. Four waiting for the cross. And they're still waiting because of Andy Hinchcliffe. John Everall. Martin Keogh. Sharp wouldn't allow him any time at all. Johnston beat Jobson to it that time, and here's Peter Beardsley! Crisp shot which pissed wide of John Horwood's right hand post. And for all the lack of size in the Everton strike force, it was Morris Johnson who got up above his former Watford teammate Richard Jobson there. And Beardsley almost took the chance. Massive clearance from Horworth. Everett couldn't clear it. Sheedy tried to tidy up. Nick Henry, Sharp was lingering offside. Fleming, Brokop Milligan, Hinchcliffe, and now Sheedy. Peter B. Greek. He's so well balanced, he's always got a chance against retreating defenders on a hard surface. And here's Johnston, and now Sheedy in support. Nobody waiting in the middle. Here's the only for Barlow, and look at the space here now for Ian Marshall. He's on his own, taking on Keogh. Just run away from him. He didn't have a soul for support, Ian Marshall, he had to go it alone. But he is a scorer of spectacular goals. 
And he was just setting himself then. He's uh, of the pillaging, rampaging type of centre forward. It causes commotion and havoc wherever he goes. But he just garnishes play with some brilliant goals from time to time. Oh, look how it's opened up for him here. He's got Andy Hinchcliffe in his shoulder. Still Kevin Sheedy. Driven wide by Milligan. And again the offside flag up. And this time Peter Beardsley in his anxiety to get forward. And overstepped the line. But once more, it's so difficult for defenders when they're turned and have a player running at them. And it's difficult to see just who was offside there. Fleming forward in support. Don't know where the ball was. He does now. Shot! Stole in front of Martin Keown. Fastened on to Craig Fleming's cross on the right hand side. He was just in front of the near post and didn't quite have the angle that he needed to beat Southall. But Everett know all about Graham Sharp. Nobody in the club's history has scored more goals for them since the war. Only Dixie Dean, in fact, has ever scored more league goals for Everton. Nick Henry. Free kick given against Peter Beagree. And his hand in the small of Nick Henry's back. Just eased him over the touchline. Jobson into Sharp. Here's Fleming forward again. And Hitchcliff has to be across to check him. A bit of a breakdown in communication between Hitchcliff and Keown, and Fleming almost profited from it. Oldham have another corner. Rick Holden, flick from Marshall, and it's hit by Palmer! Roger Palmer, who else? 24 minutes gone, and the most prolific goal scorer in all the Athletics history adds to his tally. He just sniffs out the chances. Number 156 in Oldham colours for Roger Farmer, and so many from that range. Flick on from Marshall, unhinged Everton, and Palmer was in there. 11 years ago, Oldham paid £70,000 for Roger Palmer, and he's repaying them at the rate of about £450 a girl. And in the modern climate, that is very, very cheap. I think Maurice Johnson would have to score something in the region of 3,000 for Everton to repay them at the same rate. They don't make them like Roger Palmer anymore, not at that price. for him, Fleming looking for Henry, found only Johnston, and here come Everton on the break, Beardsley, Hinchcliffe, Sheedy, Oldham have got a lot of men back goal side now, Maurice Johnston, Matthew Jackson, Robert Varshika, chance to run at Barlow, Beardsley with a header! Forward quickly across to Gathering. Peter Beardsley just tried to direct it. And it was accurate enough. It was aimed just inside the post, but didn't quite carry the zip to beat John Hallworth. Milligan to Holden. Up to Marshall. And he was wrestling Hitchcliff out of the way.
Palmer. Sheedy going in bravely. Holden's header. Dave Watson. Ball just bouncing that little bit higher than it would on a milder day. A uh, softer pitch. And it's always at an awkward height for the players. Always seems to be sort of waist or thigh height, difficult to control. Good play by Varshika. This is Everill. Sheedy. Begri. Inchcliffe is getting forward in support. Begri looking infield for a shooting chance. It might fall for Beardsley. Here's Andy Hinchcliffe. In towards Maurice Johnston, away by Jobson. Jackson trying his luck, good save by Hallworth, must have seen it late. Beardsley, still an opportunity for Johnston, and now for Kevin Sheedy. Four minutes of the first half remaining, and Everton are on terms. A rare headed goal for Kevin Sheedy, inside the six-yard box. It's his first of the season. It could hardly have come at a better time after Matthew Jackson's shot had been well parried by John Horworth, bounced awkwardly in front of him, Beasley kept it alive, Johnston couldn't force it in, but Sheedy could. Kevin Sheedy's 97th goal for Everton. Approaching the turn, there have been some very important ones down the years. Some may be more important than this one in other contexts, but what is important for Everton is that they've stopped the match from running away from them. Henry. Jackson across to hold Holden's progress. But all of them have another throw. They were really starting to impose themselves on this game, Oldham, in the wake of that opening goal from Roger Palmer Keown's clearance but Everton have clawed a lot of ground back with Sheedy's equaliser here they come on the break again with Everton Ford for Sheedy pace isn't the uh, main weapon in Kevin Sheedy's armoury having said that he doesn't hit the ball very often either but his headed goal has squared it up, there's never a dull moment at Boundary Park these days, they've been averaging nearly four goals a game here this season, and we're on course again, thanks to Roger Palmer after 24 minutes, but Oldham have only kept one clean sheet in the first division this season, so I suppose there was an inevitability about Kevin Sheedy's equaliser four minutes before the break. Half-time scoreline here at Boundary Park is Oldham Athletic 1, Everton 1, plenty more still to come. <laughs>